this this is becoming such a bizarre argument that we have to have around masks. And Trump is spot on here. The, the, the guidance has never been to always, always, always wear a mask. Oh, it's crazy. Mask outdoors, the science says unnecessary. Okay? Unnecessary. But we're told, oh my gosh, you know, it's become this symbol to people. It's become a symbol. And no one's saying, you know, if, if you want to protect yourself, wear, you know, wear a mask, right? If you think it's going to protect you. I, I'll get into in a second what the science actually does say about this because I've been reading studies about it. Actual, real, peer-reviewed studies and CDC studies from the past. There's a reason why the World Health Organization was like, look, wearing a mask probably isn't going to do that much here. There, there's a reason, friends. But I'll get to that in a moment. First, it's always been masks are situational, right? No, one's, no one is, is going to tell healthcare personnel, uh, don't wear a mask. You know, EMTs, don't wear a mask. Of course, right? They, they, they're in a higher risk, both of transmission and of, uh, and of getting, you know, of, of having it transmitted to them and transmitting it to someone else. Infection and infected. And... Yet we're told that everybody now has to have these mask mandates in, in West Hollywood. They're going to start fining people. I think it's three hundred dollars. The first offense going all the way up to a few thousand dollars for not wearing a mask in public, not in restaurants, not indoors in public. This is becoming the MAGA hat of the left. Don't you see it? Now, people will take this out of context. It's like, oh, Buck is saying masks don't work and are bad and either. And, you know, when I go to a store, they, they d- demand that I wear a mask. Indoors, I wear a mask. I'm, I'm not a mask truther. I'm not sitting around. But to wear a mask outside all the time, to wear a mask when there's no one within 20 feet of me is insane. It's insane. And that's now what people are talking about. Outdoor mask mandates. It's nuts. There's no basis for this other than the mask is now a symbol. It's a symbol of a sick country. It's a symbol of the libs saying, we believe in science. And also a reminder, everybody else, be afraid. Things aren't normal. Those are the optics of outdoor mask wearing. That's just the truth. Okay. And of course, as we know, the protesters, a lot of them wearing masks. So they couldn't be identified by the cops when they were breaking stuff or looting stores. Masks had a little twofer there, a little uh, extra benefit for them. And, you know, I'm just going to say this, too. And everyone's going to go, oh, my gosh. The science of masking, when we're talking now, let's be clear. I'll be very clear here. So, you know, when the losers from Media Matters, the, the incels of the left over at Media Matters, are like, oh, look what this guy said. Who cares? Uh, I want to be very clear that. Let me be clear. That was a little bit of an Obama thing. There, but I want to be very clear. But when you're talking about a mask that has a respirator and can filter down to a certain level of micron, right, which means we're talking about the very, very, very small particles. Obviously, you can't see them. In the case of viruses, you need an electron microscope to see them. Uh, but some masks that are either a full covering, right? If you actually have a plastic sheet and, an, and a contained breathing, I mean, a plastic guard and a contained breathing unit, yeah, nothing is, nothing is really getting in, right? That's why when the CDC has people handling Ebola virus and things like that, They have those full suits that obviously works or else nobody would ever test uh, Ebola virus or any other pathogens. They would be taking too high of a risk. Okay, so now we now we scale it down from there a little bit. What about an N95 respirator mask that's fitted properly with goggles? I I, you know, I don't want to tell the libs too much about this because I don't want them to start mask uh, mask mandates added to goggle mandates as well. But you can get. You can get a 0.03 micron uh, size virus if, it, if it's aerosolized and free f- and free floating around the air. You can get it in your eye. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what a, you know. Your eyes are actually a great transmission area, unfortunately for us, for all kinds of viruses and things. And then, it, of course, can embed itself. So but I've been reading about this. I think it's really interesting. Cloth masking, though, which if you go back and look at the Spanish flu Pandemic of 1918, you'll see all these people with cloth masks on. Um, cloth masks, people still get sick. That, that's been well established. So now it's a question of, it, it's, not, it's not highly protective. That is a lie. It is not highly, to just have a cloth mask over your mouth is not highly protective. So, or I shouldn't say it's a, well, it is a lie sometimes, but that's, that's not accurate. Um, 
and let's understand why. There are two bases for transmission of aerosol or a virus like this that's in the environment. One is surface based, one is aerosolized. You all understand the difference, right? Surface based is stuff that you touch and the virus lives on it after having been either, you know, touched by someone's finger that, you know, touched their nose or something or uh, aerosolized virus in the air. But assume for a second that we're not talking about the surface touching because that's where hand washing comes in. That is nothing that masking is only minimally effective for that because you won't touch your face as much, they say. But yeah, until something itches under your mask and then actually you do. So let's live in reality. The uh, cloth mask around your mouth has air going in, as you well know. It is not sealed. It is not fitted. And in fact, the mesh in front of your mouth, uh, you know, the, the cloth fabric that we're all using for these Uh, something that is less than one micron is going to be able, which a virus is, is going to be able to get through the seams in that. So again, this, this is all, these are all, what I'm telling you, these are all facts. This is all established. And there's a, there's some very interesting studies specifically from, and from years ago, not politicized about how dentists always wear masks when they do their dentistry stuff. And they are uh, not, any more likely, well, they're, they're, they're not in a worse position or a better position because of the masks, even though they're being constantly exposed to influenza. They tend to have very high rates of antibodies to common infections, which goes to show you that even with the mask wearing, they are getting exposed to viruses, but their body has good defenses against it because their body is constantly uh, being exposed to new aerosolized, aerosolized virus. And that effectively for dentists, the mask wearing thing is really just a custom. There has never been because it's so cheap and so easy. There's never really been high level peer reviewed studies of cloth masking uh, for the purposes of preventing disease. And in fact, as I've told you, the CDC has one about influenza, which would be very similar for transmission routes and everything else we see to coronavirus, where they said we can't really tell you if masking works or doesn't work. So there are some that say it doesn't really mean very much at all. The best argument you can have for it is for some people in some circumstances, it's not that oppressive, like indoors in a hospital setting. And if it gives you an additional five or 10 percent of protection, let's say maybe that's worth it because you're being so constantly exposed to virus and you're just upping your odds. But for all the rest of us outside. This is all the, the, people believe this for 100 years. Everyone's been uh, a little over that. Actually, it was really late, late 19th century that medical professionals started wearing masks And it was really to protect them from actual bodily fluids, actual fluids, right? It wasn't just aerosolized virus. It was bodily fluids that people were and as well as spewing their own bodily fluids at somebody else. But it's really more of a that was in some ways more of a politeness thing than a protecting you from virus thing. Now, I know this is all very controversial stuff, but just just show me the actual study done of cloth masking proving that it is highly effective against uh, corona, against any virus transmission in the air. Okay, I know I went a little deeper on that than I meant to, but I think it's important to understand that we're all, this is now, uh, this is now like a, an article of faith for people and no one ever really thinks about this. And it's very politicized. We know it has become very politicized. That said, Trump's like, yeah, sometimes wear a mask. Yeah, fine. I say the same thing. Sometimes wear a mask. All the time, outside, no. Hey, Team Buck, thank you so much for watching the first on YouTube. If you like this video, please click that little thumbs up button so then it will log as liked. And also, if you want to see more great content from the first, please click subscribe.